Am I the a-hole for telling my fiancé my daughter has to be in our wedding? Original post. I, 45 male, have a daughter, Pam, from a previous relationship. I divorced my ex-wife in good terms, and we share 50-50 custody of Pam. She's now 11. After I divorced my ex-wife, I met my now fiancé, Susan. Susan and my daughter got along very well, and after five years in my relationship with Susan, I proposed. Susan was super excited and wanted to start planning right away. She looked at venues and started asking her friends to be her bridesmaids. She then told me she wanted her niece to be a flower girl, which I had no problem with, but I said I also wanted Pam to be a flower girl. Susan looked at me funny and then said that she didn't think that Pam would fit the part. I got angry and told Susan that my daughter would be in our wedding. Susan started to become upset and said that the girls in the wedding were up to her, and Pam wouldn't be one of them. I told Susan that if Pam wasn't in the wedding, then there might not be a wedding. I stormed out and took Pam to get ice cream. Pam knows we are getting married, and told me she thinks she will look pretty in whatever dress Susan decides she would wear. This broke my heart, and I decided to text Susan and told her I would be staying at a friend's to think this over. My mother-in-law texted me saying I am overreacting, and that my daughter doesn't have to be in my wedding and I was a jerk for saying that I would cancel. So did I take it too far saying I will cancel? Am I overreacting or just being a good dad? Now for the top comments before reading the update. This is a big red flag. If she doesn't want to include her stepdaughter in her wedding, then don't expect she will include your daughter in her life. She seems a little odd to think that your daughter shouldn't take part in this important life event. It is so weird that she doesn't want her future stepdaughter to be in this wedding. Because if Opie and Susan are getting married and becoming one family, the daughter is part of the family. As a future stepmother, Susan should honestly want to include her, not exclude her. Is her treatment of Opie's daughter going to change? Is she going to start looking at ways to exclude her? Exactly. The fiancé is lucky that she is being invited to become part of Opie and his daughter's family. She is the one joining their existing family. The daughter isn't some optional outsider that can be excluded. What seems even more insidious about this is that he's been dating this woman for five years, since his daughter was six years old. Susan has known Pam for nearly half of her life already, and now that they are getting married, it's like she can start over and Pam can just go live with mom, I guess? I'd cancel the wedding and make plans to leave the relationship. Not a hole. Be careful. Susan just showed you her true feelings for Pam. You want the people who mean the most in your wedding. The fact that your fiancé, who I'm guessing is younger than you and this will be her first marriage, doesn't think your daughter fits that description is extremely telling to me. Even if Susan gives in, you've now seen where your daughter rates in her potential stepmother's life. If you choose to ignore this, it won't be the last time your daughter is left on the outside looking in. Hard agree. I was 18 when my dad married my stepmother. My stepmother didn't like us very much, but there was no hesitation. My brothers were groomsmen, and I was a bridesmaid. The bridal parties ended up being different sizes, and it was pretty clear that I was tacked on since there was one more bridesmaid than groomsmen and my dad only had my brothers, but I was automatically included from the get-go. No hesitation, no doubt, just the automatic assumption by my dad and his wife-to-be that we would be in a wedding party. If my stepmother, who barely tolerated me, cared enough to include me, what does it say about Susan, who thinks that her fiancé's child doesn't fit her aesthetic? Pretty sure that means the daughter doesn't fit her life either. Now for the update. Thank you everyone for all the kind words and suggestions. To answer a few questions, my daughter is not disabled, chubby, or having an awkward face like braces or glasses. I did ask Pam could be a groomsman. Susan immediately shot me down. Susan is 39. She is the same race as my daughter. This is her first marriage. I tried to answer as many comments as possible. I came home to talk to Susan today. When I pulled in our driveway, my mother-in-law was sitting there in her car. I got out and went inside trying to avoid talking to mother-in-law. Susan was sitting at the kitchen table and I joined her. She sat in silence so I asked the first question. Why does Pam not fit the part? And why don't you want her in the wedding at all? Her answer full-on shocked me. She quietly said, I was hoping that after the wedding, you could become a holiday visit-only dad. 
I didn't want her in the wedding, so she wouldn't be in the photos around the house since she wasn't going to be around much. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand, and pulled my engagement ring off. Her eyes started to tear up and said we shouldn't end the marriage over this, and that she can change. I told her the damage was already done. I told her that I wanted her things moved out by the next week, and that she could come get them when my daughter wasn't home. The house is in my name, and I paid for it. I was allowing her to get her furniture that she paid for. She stormed out, and mother-in-law came knocking on the door saying I was being unreasonable. I couldn't imagine only seeing my daughter three to four times a year. The fact that Susan wanted me to give up part of my custody blew me away. I'm sitting on my couch just in shock. Our honeymoon was supposed to be in Hawaii, so it looks like me and Pam will be going instead. I will update again if anything happens. The fact that some people don't realize that they're Disney villains never ceases to amaze me. It's all pretty mind-blowing. The ex feature mother-in-law saying he was being unreasonable for not accepting abandoning his child feels even more incredible. From a quasi-outside perspective, how can she not see how psycho this is? Honestly, I've known a few wicked step-parents in real life, and their families were always their biggest enablers slash defenders. I'd bet money mother-in-law is also the type of person who couldn't recognize any stepchild slash adopted child slash foster child as being one of her grandchildren. I actually don't think it's all that surprising that Opie's fiancé didn't reveal her true colors earlier on. I've known a lot of people who felt similarly about their partner's children and didn't really make it clear how they felt about them until shortly after they were engaged or married. Similar to how a lot of people turn into abusive monsters or lazy leeches right after moving in with someone slash getting married or once someone gets pregnant or has a child. Agreed. Many comments kept saying that there must have been something, but I totally think it's possible that she just showed her true colors now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, let's be honest, we've all had relationships and friendships with truly awful people. And I'm sure we all felt hoodwinked when we finally realized the sort of person they actually were. I kept my cool, calmly took her hand, and pulled my engagement ring off. This was raw as heck. Absolutely no hesitation. Great A dad, and I hope the best for him and his daughter. Oh, and I also hope Sharon steps on a Lego five times a day for the rest of her life. Definitely great A dad. It's too bad things didn't work out with Pam's mom, but it looks like they still had a good relationship, just not a romantic one. I'm glad Pam's got parents to put her first. I hope Opie makes her a groomsmaid if he meets someone new that he wants to marry and only changes his mind if the new fiancé makes a strong case for her to be a bridesmaid instead. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife that I don't want her in my life anymore? My wife and I have been together for 15 years. We were together for two years before we got married. We both brought a child into that relationship and I ended up legally adopting her daughter. Before we got married, she called the wedding off at the last minute because we had an argument. I wasn't allowed to see her daughter that I've been raising the past two years, and I was heartbroken. Obviously, we reconciled and got married, and I adopted her daughter who is now 15 and I just see as my own. We also have one son together. But that's kind of how our relationship has been the last 15 years. She gets mad at me and she ends the relationship. Last year, she even said she doesn't love me anymore, and I was living outside until she decided to love me again. We're currently going through this again, and I'm just over it. I'm always the one fighting to keep our family together, and I just can't anymore. She wants me gone, and I finally want to be gone and not deal with this anymore. The kids are old enough to keep in touch with me on their own, and they know I'll always be there for them. But she says I'm an a-hole, because I said that once I'm gone, I don't want her in my life anymore. I want a fresh start, and I want to be free from her drama for good. Am I the a-hole because I don't want to stay in touch with her once I'm gone? I loathe my ex-wife. I would love for her to just disappear someday. But we have two kids together, so I have to deal with her. My suggestion is that when you have to interact with her, keep it strictly about the kids. Nothing more than that. Oh, and get a good divorce lawyer. You're gonna need it, I think. It seems like she likes to play with your heart any way she can. She will use those kids to get at you. Get a lawyer so legal boundaries can be set. 
Someone gave me the same advice, and I am so thankful that they did. Same here with ex-husband. Great advice. Don't fall for her manipulation and don't look back. You'll be much happier, and so will all your kids. A-hole? Not from what you posted. Ignorant? A bit. Once you have a child with someone, they are a part of your life forever. At an absolute minimum, there will be custody exchanges. You will need to co-parent over things like doctor's appointments, medical coverage, schooling if they decide to go to college or trade school, etc. And what if one of the kids wants to get married and wants both parents there? The link will forever be a part of your life. You may not be able to get rid of her 100%, but you should at least try to keep things respectfully indifferent for the kid's sake. I'm coming from a divorced family, and this sounds a lot like my dad. He just didn't want to deal with my mom. He'd pick us up, drop us off, but never said hi to her. I assume he means part of his personal life, but I don't know for sure. It really is forever, and it can creep up any time. Last year, after a family tragedy, my dad had to deal with my bio mom and her side of the family. I felt guilty like it was my responsibility to deal with that instead of him. After all, they've been divorced for something like 35 years. But he said no, it was his to deal with, and I'm still the child in this relationship. I still felt bad though, mainly because I was relieved I didn't have to deal with her or her family. There's a reason they're divorced, and a reason I don't want anything to do with them. Edit? After thinking about it and reading the comments, I do think cutting her out completely is an a-hole move, and would put a lot on my kids that they shouldn't have to deal with. My intention was never to abandon them, but to communicate with them directly and not deal with their mom. I don't think that will work though. This position came from a place of extreme frustration, and I'll have to work through that. Not only that, but in spite of our problems, she did give me 15 years of her life and two amazing kids whom I love more than anything. I do plan on moving on, but in a way where I can try to limit my interactions with her, while still communicating respectfully. Thank you to everyone who took the time to comment. Last story. Am I the a-hole for breaking up with my fiancé before the wedding because he has a child? I-25 and my now ex-27 met when I was 20. He was a bartender back then. We immediately started dating. He was cute and funny, and we have a wonderful two-year-old daughter. We had an amazing relationship until one week ago. We didn't get married in five years because he didn't want to. He always said that he's okay with living together, but he doesn't want to get married. I was not okay with that, but I got pregnant. Pregnancy stress, baby stress, etc., so I didn't think much about it. Then, three months ago, he proposed out of nowhere. He was in a hurry too and said he just wanted to get married immediately. So we planned a wedding. I thought he changed his mind, but when I posted this proposal on Instagram, I got a message from a woman around my age who DM'd me showing his son's pictures who was almost five. I was shocked and confronted my fiancé about it. I showed him the pictures and messages and he started crying. I comforted him almost two hours then he started to tell me about this woman. They met at a bar he worked. Our relationship was one or two week old by that time. He didn't think much about it and slept with her. She told him that she's getting an abortion but she didn't get one, and he learned that three months ago when she was back in town. He was scared that I'll leave him, so he wanted to get married. I broke up with him and I'm very sure about my decision. But mind his parents are telling me that I'm wrong, that we were new, and I can't break up with him because of something happened five years ago, blah blah. I don't know how many times he cheated because he didn't think we will made it that far. He said only once, but I don't believe him. I'm disgusted, but confused because of my daughter. She's daddy's girl. I don't want to make my daughter and his dad apart. Maybe I can just close my eyes and forgive him? I don't know. Here's the deal. The issue is not what he did five years ago. The issue is what he did three months ago. Which is, when he found out he had monumental life news that his partner of five years had every right to know. But rather than telling you that and dealing with it in an honest, straightforward manner, he not only lied by deception, but attempted to double down and trap you into a legal marriage, making it harder for you to leave him should you discover his cheating at a later time. You are absolutely correct to have dumped him. Not for the five years ago mistake, but for the colossal one three months ago. That means you can never trust him again.
Yep, it's not just a fling. It's the actively hiding the result of the fling. If his fling partner didn't DM you OB, you would never have known about the fling and child because your ex-fiancé would never have told you. Tell your and his parents that it wasn't about the fling. It was his decision to deceive and lie to you about the child and fling. That shows a lack of trust and respect from him to you, not the a-hole. Especially instrumentalizing something she really wanted, marriage, against her and using it as a manipulative tool. It's not just about him cheating while the relationship was new. It's also trying to rush you into a marriage to keep you from dumping him and hiding the kid when you found out, not the a-hole. He handled the situation stupidly. Instead of being an adult and explaining this to you rationally, he tried to entrap you in marriage to make it harder to leave him once you found out. Not a all. You were right to leave him. I'm not sure sleeping with someone when a relationship is a week or two old is disqualifying. At that point, you were dating. But lying about a kid and not telling you why he wants to marry so fast certainly is. Exactly. I guarantee that as he come to her immediately after he found out about his kid and told her the truth, she wouldn't have broken up with him. He instead hides the information that she has every right to know and tries to trap her in marriage so she doesn't leave him. Not only did he lie to her and try to get married under false pretenses, he weaponized her desire to get married and used it against her. He not only lied to her, he betrayed her over a maybe mistake he made when they first started dating. Honestly, if I was dating a guy and learned years down the line